So today is a little bit different, I guess, in the sense that like, let's talk about feelings. I think oftentimes we're under this misconception that you can only have one feeling at once. And like when we're younger, we're only taught the basic emotions like anger, sadness, happy, anxious. There's not really the full spectrum of emotions, which is what life really is, which is what emotions really are. And as I've gotten older, I've just kind of realized that like, you have permission to feel two things at once and you have permission to also not know how you feel. I think that putting a name to how you feel really helps a lot in terms of coping and processing it, but sometimes it takes us time to figure out how we feel. And we can also have two extremely large emotions at the same time. Today something happened and I'm feeling two really big emotions at once. One is a sense of grief for a life that I could have had and that at one point I really wanted. And the other is extreme gratitude that I didn't get what I wanted. I don't think we talk about this enough that it's sometimes God lets people hurt us so much that we have to let them go. And that is the biggest blessing that we could ever receive. A lot of times the things that we want or the, the things that we think we want aren't always the best for us. And I know that that's cliche, but it's cliche for a reason because it's true. Sometimes we don't know what's best for us and we don't hear the conversations that happen behind closed doors. You could think you know something, but the reality of it could be completely different. I think about this a lot in terms of business, but also in terms of like personal relationships. You learn different sides of people through different circumstances and sometimes you're put in situations where it's an extremely difficult situation and people have different ways of coping with things. Um, but let's talk about emotions. So in terms of like big emotions, I think Grief is probably one of the hardest ones to cope with and one of the hardest ones to understand. And throughout the past few years, I've lost a lot of friends to suicide. I've also lost a lot of people throughout my life. And that's one way to look at grief, right? Like the obvious one is when people pass away. But there's also other forms of grief, like grieving for a life that you could have had or grieving for a job that you lost, a person that you lost, um, grieving the idea of what could have been. And grief manifests itself in such strange ways because it's not a linear feeling and most feelings aren't, but especially not grief because you could be walking through life, walking through your day, doing completely fine, and then something could happen or you could see someone that looks like someone or hear a song or, or something and it just triggers you and it puts you right back in that moment because our bodies don't know, our minds are so strong and so smart, but physiologically what's happening in your, in your body is it's putting you right back where you are. And I think what I've found has been helpful in terms of processing grief in all of the different forms is talking about it and trying to work through it both physically and mentally. I find that working out helps me a lot with my mental health and it helps me a lot with clarity because I'm able to process things in a different way when I'm doing something else. It kind of just clears up my mind to kind of just like sanitize and figure out everything else that's going on and also just writing about it because when, when you're free writing I feel like if you know it's not going anywhere you there's no sense of judgment there's no worry about like if you tell a friend what are they gonna think or what are they gonna say and I know that oftentimes even with my therapist I personally struggle to even say things to them because I think about like 
there's a lot of self-judgment before feeling feelings and I think that that's normal but it's also not necessarily the best because we're allowed to feel what we feel right but sometimes it's hard to even admit to ourselves that we're struggling with something and obviously as everybody who's ever heard this knows admitting it is the first part but yeah so lately i've been thinking a lot about gratitude and simultaneously a lot about grief because of the path i've chosen because it's not a paved path because there's no one else that's done this before me and what i do is simultaneously so universal but also so specific i sometimes grieve the idea of a simpler life of a life where i had less ambition or wanted different things but i have big dreams and because i have big dreams i have to work really hard for them and there's going to be setbacks along the way there's going to be redirections and things don't always look the way that you were hoping they would look and there's also some grief in that like you have to learn how to deal with a different reality but i'm also extremely grateful for every single twist and turn that's taking me to exactly where i am right now because I think when you start feeling grateful for things, life gets easier and processing things gets easier as well. Gratitude is the greatest antidote to grief because I'm grateful for every single thing that I lost that allowed me to make room for things that I've gained. And I don't necessarily consider it a loss. I consider it a repositioning. Like if life is a game of Tetris, sometimes we have to move things around a little bit in order to make all the pieces fit together. But when you're in the moment, you sometimes can't see all those things. It's only when you're outside that you can see from a larger external perspective, like why things had to happen the way that they happened. And every single time I look back on my life, even down to like my acting journey, I realized that like my whole life was setting me up for this. I was an English minor. I read a lot of books, a lot of plays. I used to be in the church choir when I was younger. I certainly don't sing anymore. I'd love to start doing that again. And I was in sales. I did a lot of public speaking. There were so many different parts of my life that prepared me to be an actor, but I just didn't have the space for it until, I don't know, until like a complete mindset shift. And sometimes you have to go through a lot of experiences in life in order to have a mindset shift. And I think, I guess what I wanna say is that like, gratitude doesn't always have to be screaming loud. It could also just be like having a gratitude journal and writing things down that you're grateful for every day. And you don't have to be grateful for like giant, huge things. It could just be grateful for small things. I mean, I know that the majority of the time my gratitude journal is just me going like, I'm so grateful that I got to sleep. I'm grateful for every opportunity. I'm grateful for people positively mentioning my name in rooms I haven't stepped into. I'm grateful for water. <laughs> I'm grateful for fresh fruit. And especially during New York heat waves, I'm grateful for AC. It also could look like silent prayers to the universe. I think I do this a lot actually when I'm walking down the street or something happens and I remember something or I'm prompted by something I just kind of like look up and I'm like thank you because sometimes we're so busy working to get to the destination that we forget to be grateful for where we are right now and remember that like where where you are now was once where you dreamed to be and it's also maybe where somebody else dreams of being and I think in, in that regard it's it's kind of like fitness right like you could be working towards a goal and it might not you might not be getting there as fast as you want you might not physically be seeing changes as much but like you don't know like somebody else could be looking at you and like you could be their goal even though you're looking at somebody else and saying like I want to look like that or I want to be like that or be able to achieve that and I think taking time every day to realize that like we can be grateful and also be ambitious at the same time. We can be grateful for 
all the opportunities you've been given, all the progress you've made, but you can also continue to be ambitious. And con I got cut off. But you could also continue to want big things. And that's okay too. So many things have happened over this past like few months that I don't even quite know how to ar articulate or process. The biggest of which being being displaced and not being able to find a solid place to live and couch crashing with friends for like a month. I had a lot of grief for stability and for a life that I thought maybe I wanted, but also at the same time, so much gratitude that I never realized people could show up for me in the ways that they did. I never would have even, even asked for help or thought that people would be willing to help me like that until I experienced something so extreme that I finally had to ask for help. So I am kind of grateful for the things that I went through over the past few months because they allowed me to see how much the people in my life love me and how strong my network of support is. I had a general idea that people would be supportive, but I didn't realize that like people would actually stand behind it. And so I guess that's what I'm the most grateful for is the fact that people actually stood behind saying like, I'm here for you or I want to help you. And we have to also just be willing to ask for help, which is something I'm still learning to do. So I'm grateful for myself for every time I have the bravery to ask for help. And then also grateful for the people that do help me. I'm grateful for the bad things. I'm grateful for the good things. I'm grateful for everything in between because they all form me. And I know that I can't really see a clear picture now, but I know that it, it's all going to mean something big. Anyways, that's just what I was thinking about today. I thought maybe people could relate. Lots of love.